So, you know, I've got a really cool idea. Why don't we show off a little product now? What do you say? I would love that. After all, okay. this this is a product <laughs> webinar. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit of an impromptu. I'm not sure if we were going to do it today or not, but um, I did have one of our our uh, principal engineers at Inter Interlink sort of join the call. Um, Pete, if you're on, I think you're on. I see, I see you there. Yeah, I'm on. Um, you guys we wanted okay? to sort of have Pete join the call and and sort of take you guys through our new AI redaction offering. Um, so, Pete, I'm gonna with that. I'm gonna hand it over to you. Great. Uh, thank you, Andre. Uh, so if you just give me a second here, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I did load it up. So basically what I'm going to show you here, as they said, is our AI redaction offering in VDR Pro, which is the Interlinks virtual data room platform. And to build this, we basically took a baseline component from PDF Tron and combined it with our own existing security and AI systems. And the result is really something that customers can use to conduct due diligence uh, more efficiently and at scale. So I guess to uh, jump right in, in order to access the feature, you basically go into VDR Pro into an exchange, which is basically what we call a work area for uh, documents around a particular business transaction. Uh, you can then go to the AI assisted redaction tab here. And this is gonna be the main area which drives all of the redaction work for a particular transaction. Uh, so you see in this area, there's already a bunch of documents over here. You can uh, add more documents to the area. You can edit the redaction and look at the AI assisted markup. And you can also customize the uh, AI experience for this particular transaction or exchange, uh, being able to basically turn on and off certain types of, of sensitive information, which you'd like the AI system to automatically mark for you. In addition to AI, there's also a decidedly non-AI feature where you can set your own custom searches, which are just basic keyword searches. And these sort of blindly run on every document in the system. Uh, every time a document is added to this redaction area, we're gonna always search and mark this. And this being here is sort of us saying, we know we're building a system that's gonna be constantly improving, but in case we do miss anything, you always do have that ability to also do your own sort of searches at scale and not waste time repeating the same processes over and over. So uh, from here, we could actually jump in and look at some of the markup and see what it looks like to work on redacting a document with AI. But first I should probably mention what it takes to uh, get a document to be ready to do that. Uh, so every document in this area goes through uh, several steps of processing uh, ahead of time. We basically take the document, we OCR it. Uh, we take all that text and we send it off to the AI system uh, at Interlinks, which basically reads through that, determines uh, which of that information, which of the text is sensitive, and then it creates a model, which can then be loaded when you open the document, which then basically provides you all of the uh, markup which it thinks is uh, sensitive. So uh, basically this process here, as you can sound, as you can tell, is basically interactive. We're uh, going to be doing our best guess at what's good, but it's really important for you to, uh, as a subject matter expert, to give your feedback as well, and to uh, basically improve our system by modifying it and tweaking it to be just right. So I can actually go into one of these documents right now, and you'll see what the experience is actually like. So as you see, when it loads up, uh, if any of you have looked at the PDF Tron components before, this should look a little bit familiar on the right. Uh, what we've did, basically done is taken the PDF Tron web viewer component and I uh, heavily customized it, leaving mainly the interactive document editor on the right, but completely changing the section on the left to uh, better manage and allow uh, modifying all of these AI suggestions. And the nice thing about this was that uh, building this with the PDF Tron web viewer component was super easy. We didn't need to ask them for any custom code. We didn't need them to modify anything on their side. Because of the way that uh, PDF Tron does actually build extendable components, we're able to take this and sort of extend it right out of the box to actually have a pretty different experience than what the standard uh, web viewer component is. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you right there for a second, Pete. Right, because what Pete what Pete just said, right, really much re you know resonated sort of what Andre and I were talking about a minute ago, right? having sort of reusable components, right? That allows you sort of to work more effectively and deliver products like this. Back to you, back to you, Pete. Sure. And that's definitely been very important to us uh, as we work through with the PDF Tron team. It's been great to uh, be able to utilize that. It's helped us get to market a lot faster than if we had to sort of uh, start from scratch on something. So as you can see over here, as I said, here are the AI recommendations and here are here's the document. Uh, we can start by actually going through and looking some, at some of these AI recommendations. And I think what I tried to do here is I actually tried to grab a document last minute, which I think the AI does okay on, but it's not that great. It gets some things right, but it definitely gets some things wrong. 
So you can basically see that it will be an interactive process where you can start off going through and trying to correct anything that it got wrong. So you can see this is a list of names over here, um, which it's actually marked and said, these are sensitive, you should mark these up. By and large, this looks pretty good. I think we should probably keep just about all these. I don't see anything that's obviously not a name. Uh, if I go down to companies, there's a lot of companies here. I bet some of these might not actually be company names. So if I keep scrolling down, I think there's a one or two at the bottom. Uh, yeah, process, that's clearly not a company name. It kind of got that wrong. So we can click this unmark and it's gonna automatically remove any of the markings of the word process over there. Um, also, I'm guessing manufacturing isn't actually a company name. Uh, so you can do this. And this is again, heavily leveraging the PDF Tron component, but it's just us building extra components on top of their component, which interact with it and are dynamically changing the regular web viewer. Uh, so once you've gone through and worked through all the AI redactions, that's just the first part of the process. It's really up to you then to go over to the document itself and see what it missed. So in this case, as I mentioned, it clearly missed a decent amount of stuff. Uh, over here, you saw it got a lot of names, but some of these I think are probably companies. So what you would wanna do is go through and actually mark those by hand. Uh, going through and correcting it like this. Uh, if you see some stuff which is repeated, we do also uh, expose the regular PDF Tron search capability, uh, which is something that just you get right out of the box with the PDF Tron web viewer. And that has a nice feature where you can type one search term and it's gonna automatically mark up all instances of that in the document. I think so, one of the other things that that we, you know, we've done too is we've sort of exposed the the ability to sort of do more rules-based um, you know, searches as well. So regular expressions is another way for us to, for you to sort of augment the AI as well as sort of the, the subject matter experts sort of coming in there and, and validating you know, what, what we got right and what we didn't get right. Yep. And so just to be clear, I mean, this is basically the process right here is you really would go through the document. Um, as much as uh, we do wanna help have AI help you with it, you still are the subject matter expert. And it's really up to you to have final say on the document. You know, For anybody who knows about due diligence, I don't have to explain to you how critical it is to make sure that absolutely no personally identifiable information sort of sneaks through in these documents. Uh, the good thing is though, by letting the AI sort of do the first work for you, it takes out a big chunk of it. And then by you correcting the AI as part of that process, we're gonna hopefully learn and actually improve. So the next time you use it, it'll maybe do a little bit better. Yeah, and so that, you know, what you just touched on, Pete, that's super important. Again, if I go back to sort of the conversation that Andre and I were having around sort of, you know, where the machine intelligence, you know, is sort of working hand in hand with the human intelligence, right? That whole human, human in the loop thing. We're, you know, as subject matter experts, you know, the AI is, AI is again, is, to Pete's point, is not going to get it right all the time. But if you design it the right way, right, the way in which users are interacting with the actual, actual application the AI learns from you know, the corrections that are me being made by the subject matter, matter experts. So that's, again, sort of when we think about the experience of how you, users interact with something that is being machine intelligence recommended, right? Super important, you know, in terms of sort of that, that feedback mechanism loop. 100%, I guess. Uh, so assuming we've gone through and updated the document, you have a couple of options here. You could save a draft of all your changes, which could be reviewed by a coworker or by you in the future, or you can go ahead and actually redact the document using redact and replace. And uh, what redact and replace is gonna do is basically gonna be, it's gonna create a clean revision of the document with all of the text you see marked here fully removed. So it's basically safe to uh, share with customers. So I can actually change the name of the document as part of doing this. Let me add a little redacted word at the end of there, and I can click redact and replace. So here it's basically gonna do the regular PDF Tron redaction flow. Uh, one thing to notice is we really are, again, this is all built into the web viewer, utilizing the fact that they do have this really powerful web component, which despite running in your browser is able to actually pull apart and manipulate a whole PDF file um, and literally rip out parts of it and create a clean version of it, which any of you who are sort of as old as me and remember the old days of links and internet like that, Quite crazy to think that all this can be done right in the browser. Come on, Pete, you're not that old. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you can see it did redact in the end here. Uh, one thing you didn't see is that as part of the redaction process, it basically did do that feedback step as well. So it took that final redaction that you did, compared it to what we had suggested, and sort of sent the delta off to our internal AI system. And that's basically gonna let us learn for the future what it got right, what it got wrong, and if there were sort of any parts where it didn't think it was sensitive, but that actually should be marked up. Yep. Yep. So that's that that learning element that we were just talking about. Yeah. 
So that's pretty much all I had. Uh, before I try to see if there are any questions, I do want to really thank Andre and the whole PDF Tron team about this. Uh, I've been working on developing this since the very early days of the product with just a couple of other developers. And they've been really great at uh, answering all of our questions, being really responsive, uh, sending us sample code snippets when we had questions how to do things. Uh, it's been great work, working with them, and I really can't wait to see what features they do next and also how we can maybe take some of those features and use them to sort of further streamline the due diligence process for our customers. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And Andre and team, thanks, you guys. It's, it's been fantastic. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much, Engis, for your kind words. Thanks so much uh, for a great demo, Pete. By the way, the demo was fantastic. The product is great, and I loved how we just kind of jumped in at the end and made this product-centric webinar all about the product and it is and the ui and the user experience of how users can kind of organize the multitude of documents that you have and just kind of easily kind of flow through the process taking out uh, you know the pain and like just just think about it. like i i want to kind of ask uh chingis or Peter in this one kind of question mm -hmm. from my perspective is that you know before you introduce kind of the ai assisted technology how long would it take the user to manually go through and kind of mark up that document. Yeah. And after that, how much time is it saving them in between? Yeah. So it it's uh the answer is a really long time, right? <laughs> and it depends on, you know, the number of documents, but you know, super manual process, right? Super manual process in general. And sort of when you're going through the 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 whole, you know, due diligence process of, you know, you know, whether you're doing a merger or an acquisition, divestor, whatever, whatever the scenario might be, right? There is this, you know, element around sort of the legality aspect of, of documents that are being, you know, reviewed as part of the due diligence process, right? And today, what, what happens in, in the due diligence space is it's manually, literally manually done, right? Uh, and, you know, hours and hours and hours, it could take days, depending on the sort of the volume. Uh, so it's sort of, a, it kind of depends, but basically, you know, the idea here was that we would provide a mechanism by which we can sort of scale this process, right? But in the background, you know, we are also sort of continuously learning the machine algorithms that we've created and the design experience that goes along with that is sort of taking that, those kinds of things into consideration so that it gets better and gets better and gets better. Yep. Right. And, um, you know, I think that's, you know, that's um, exciting. Right. Because, you know, we're again, we're helping, you know, our customers sort of, you know, be more effective, be you know, more efficient. And honestly, when you're doing a deal in the due diligence space, it's very time sensitive. Right. So, you know, the, the ability to, for us to sort of help and sort of speed up that process with a higher degree, increasing higher degree of accuracy. That's that's important. That's super important in, in our space, right? So, um, you know, we're pretty excited about it. I did see one question in the chat that I did want to answer, which said, "Is this all web viewer, or is it using some backend server side processes?" So, the backend server side processes are all right now are all just the AI, basically ahead of time, sort of determining what the sensitive terms are. Uh, right now, the way that this is deployed out for this early version. We don't go ahead and redact the document or do any of the markup using their SDKs on the server side. Instead, what we do is in a very secure server of our own, sort of keep track of the critical keywords that our AI has determined. These are the ones that should be marked up. Then once you load the web viewer, which is strictly on the client side, we sort of send a request over there with that listing of the words that should mark up and where they are in the document. And the web viewer then dynamically make, through JavaScript basically marks all of those words up before you start working with the document. Uh, I see one more question. Does PDFNet meet all the underlying document conversion needs for your redaction product? Or do you augment your PDFNet implementation to provide broader and enhanced conversion from source formats? Um, it does a great job. It definitely does provide a lot of different formats. Um, because we're relatively early days with this, we've been heavily focused on more of the formats that uh, PDFNet does. Um, certainly, though, behind the scenes, we've also, as part of building our AI level, our AI service, and a whole text extraction service, which I didn't even mention yet, and just basically a document service, we do have things in place so that we would be very happy to reuse the uh, PDFnet ones. But if, for instance, there is some esoteric file type which we need to support, which just isn't in the timeline for PDFtron, we could certainly go build something which converts to that with opened in PDFtron. And Pete, just just before we kind of move on to the next question, I did I did want to kind of um, 
do a bit of a review, I guess, or a surprise for kind of this webinar, kind of talking about the um, the formats that PDFtron supports. So at PDFtron, as it says in the name PDFs, uh, we originally started kind of heavily focused on PDF rendering, conversion quality, and all the different operations, and as well as taking that technology and scaling across number of platforms. Now, our next focus was around MS Office documents and providing our own conversion engine that does not rely on any third party or you know MS Office or any of that. So we build it in the house to offer seamlessly go between the formats across, again, any of the platforms. And just recently, with the PDFtron SDK 9 that we have released, and PDFtron SDK is kind of the SDK that powers at core all of our kind of product offerings we have added advanced imaging module that now enables us to kind of go into the new spaces around images. So we added DICOM medical imaging format and we added quite a number of other advanced um, kind of the Photoshop, uh, Adobe Illustrator and a number of other imaging files or even, you know, kind of if we could have put the lens back on the documents, um, uh, the TIFFs uh, that are used kind of in the scanning technology of be able to work with those formats, just somebody scans their documents in, or even if somebody takes a picture with their phone, and if we're using iPhones, it's HEIC format. And again, we're trying to really move away from the format and trying to focus the user on what they do best in terms of they really kind of want to, I don't care what format it is, I'm really just trying to get my job done. Yeah, and I love that about what you guys are doing, right? You're sort of making the formats an, an agnostic sort of factor, right, in in the equation, right? And so that's that's super important for us too, right? Although a lot of our on the due diligence side, most of our documents are PDF. You know, there's certainly a lot of other document formats that are out there too, right? In terms of office documents, and with the pandemic, right, we're starting to see a lot more video video files and in, in you know being utilized, right? One of the things we did. During the pandemic, is we we created sort of a you know better sort of video streaming capabilities, which of which leverages your viewer technology, right? Um, and so you know again, right, we we are looking sort of for those opportunities we talked about earlier, right, Andre, in terms of hey, we need to be able to react dynamically, right, in the market, or what's going on in the marketplace. Well, gosh, right, a year and a half ago, we didn't you know the pandemic sort of came out of what everybody thought was nowhere. Right. And so everybody's now working virtually. Right. What do we got to do to help help that? Right. Well, we got to give them, you know, better ways to sort of get access to data and information that will be part of due diligence. And video sort of now is becoming, you know, more mainstream, <laughs> you know, no pun intended streaming. Right. But, um, you know, that's that's super important. So love it. Exactly. Exactly. And no, I, re I really love kind of the kind of the thinking about putting the user first and then collaboration and just building. And by having the PDF drawn and interlinks align closely in the way we develop products and the way we get it out, we can kind of scale and grow together. And I just can't wait, you know, for the partnership to, you know, grow and all yeah. the features that you guys are coming up with are just amazing. So really, really appreciate uh, everyone's time today um, and coming for you to coming on to the webinar. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Pete, thanks for kind of jumping in last minute there and showing things off. No problem. Thanks for letting me demo. I don't normally don't do this in any calls. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it uh, went off flawlessly and uh, we'd like to see more of that too. And so uh, we can't wait for the next thing. Again, I really appreciate everyone. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your week.